Welcome to The Holy Yogi, where we help you find the guru inside of you. Hello, beautiful. Hello, handsome. And if no one has told you today that they love you, I love you. <laughs> Let me be the first. And today is the first day of our wonderful series. It's going to be on a playlist coming up soon. So do me a favor, like, comment, and subscribe. Yeah, this is going to be a doozy. We're going to talk about, for the coming new year in 2019, how to find your soulmate in 2019. Some people call it their spiritual partner. Some people call it their twin flames. We're going to use the term soulmate because uh, it really does come from the heart and it comes from the soul of the very essence of who and what you are. So get excited. Let's get ready. We're going to jumpstart this Valentine's uh, Day series in January so we can get things rocking and rolling and implement and put those things in place. And what do you know? Maybe Valentine's Day or around that time, you'll find your soulmate or more importantly, your soulmate will find you. We're going to do this the divine way. So, Ah, let's breathe in that good prana, baby. Yes, and let's get rocking and rolling because we're going to bring life into this wonderful experience to you. So, on the first day of focusing on finding your soulmate, what we're going to do is first find the love that you're looking for by first being the love of your own life. Yes. The first step, the first secret, yeah, it is a secret, but it's not really a secret, but it is a secret because so many people aren't looking for it and don't know where to find it, so we're going to divulge it. The first secret to finding your soulmate, and that is, is to first be the love that you're looking for. You have to love yourself first. First and foremost, first you love you. First you learn and educate yourself on what true love is all about. So let me ask you, what is love? What is love? You know, a lot of us have been programmed and conditioned to believe that love is very conditionally based. That's the love of we're really honest with ourselves is the love that we've grown up and we've learned to be love. And that's not love at all. You know, I'm going to break it down and get real simple. It is in the Bible, in Corinthians, in a lot of wonderful healing arts in the Torah, the Bhagavad Gita. If you read them all, if you read all the ancient scriptures and the like, it's on the comedic walls in Africa. You know, it is, you know, so available and so simple. And all of us, we, we know it, <laughs> but we're in denial of it. And we make it very conditionally based. But first and foremost, when you love yourself, you fully understand that if you look up the definition of divine, if you look up the definition of diva, it is God an expression of love incarnated in a man for God or di divine or diva for a woman. And so in essence, God is love. You've read that enormously amount of time. God is love. Mm -hmm. So what is love? And I think it's Corinthians 13. You know the verses better than I do. But make a long story short, you know, it love does not boast, it does not envy, it's not jealous, it's not an angry God. You know, some people are misinterpreted because some aspects of the Bible, which is written by man, keep that in proper perspective, to err is to be human. So there's some, some frailties. There is, the Bible is not the be all and end all. No, I'm going to get in trouble with a lot of people with that. But let's be, keep it real, let's keep it truthful. And if you fully understand Jesus Christ when he roamed the earth, the world, and, and the like, he did not have a Bible in his hand. He knew that God spoke with inside of him. 
he incarnated that information and he acted it out in the world. And so that's what you really want to do. You really, really want to get into the true essence of what love is all about. True, true love is unconditional. It's agape love. When you love all the humanitarian, and there's no separation of love. There's not, you know, separate love you have for your children or separate love you have for a mate or separate love that you have um, for the, your fellow man and womankind. It is all the same type of love. And it's completely unconditional. Meaning that type of love, it is, you know, complete compassion, complete joy, complete happiness, complete, you know, uh, balance and righteousness. It is truth. It is justice. It is honesty. It is sincerity. It is, you know, balance. It is harmony, you know. Um, it is complete bliss. It is knowledge. It is power that you have with inside of yourself to forgive and to accept and to love people just the way that they are and to be good to everyone and everything. So, how you know via, and love is a verb too, it is an action word, it is more than what we say. It is all about what we do. So let's analyze. Are you loving yourself? Are you happy with yourself? Do you wake up every day in joy and in peace and in total bliss with your life and with the people that are in your life? Okay. Um, are you in that state of absolutely complete? unconditional love and that means that it's a type of love that when something happens great in your life you're happy and when something happens you know challenging in your life you're happy for example are you happy you know with you know a hundred pounds more on your body um, than you are if you are in shape, are you loving yourself? Are you happy with yourself? Are you at peace with yourself? And it's all about how you are thinking about yourself, how you are um, speaking about yourself. Because keep in mind, if you say something negative to someone else, you're really talking to whom? Yourself. Because that's that energy and information coming back to you. And more importantly, are you loving yourself via your actions? So once again, okay, Lon, that sounds great. That sounds wonderful. But how do I know that I love myself? Well, you know you love yourself when you get up on time. You're not late when you go to work, okay? Because you love yourself and you respect other people's time. Because you know time is money and it's energy and it's respectful. So you know you're going to show up on time for your meetings you're going to show up on time for work because you have clients to meet or you have a job to do to help people achieve their goals and aspirations. Let's say, for example, you work at a bank where they need that teller there at the bank to be on time. So when they go in there to go retrieve their money to accomplish their goals and dreams, you're there to assist them. So you honor yourself by being on time, by being punctual for yourself. So you can get your paycheck and make sure that you take care of your bills. You don't want to get fired from your job. Are you doing that on time? So you're honoring your time and other people's time. Are you making enough money to pay your bills, to take care of your, um, your other obligations of, you know, food, clothing, shelter to provide for you? So is enough money coming in for you to be able to take care of that? And if enough money's not coming in, oh my God, are you able to pay your bills on time? Do you have good credit? That's symbolic of you having good credit because you're able to pay your bill on time to respect the lender 
that loaned you the money, keep in mind, because you promised him when you signed that credit card bill or when you signed for that loan for your home, that you're going to be responsible and you're going to pay your um, mortgage on time, okay? Your bills on time. That's the expression of loving yourself, that you have good credit. Because the word good is what? God, okay? That you are eating good food, good health. You're taking care of yourself. Your body is in shape, okay? You're not smoking. You're not drinking. You're not eating box canned frozen foods that aren't healthy with you. You're on a good vegan type of diet because you're humanitarian and you don't unnecessarily contribute to the demise and killing of animals and things of that nature. So are you loving yourself? Are you loving the world based upon how you're living and how you're taking care of your body, okay? Are you wearing clean clothes? Are you getting up every morning and showering and smelling nice and fresh and good smelly smelly um, as an expression of loving yourself, making sure you're cleaning and good hygiene every single word. See, every time I mention the word good, I'm talking God because the word God isn't good, right? Okay, so you see where I'm going with that. So you're taking care of your health. You live in a really nice, clean, organized home because if you're clean, organized home, you're balanced and you know they say that cleanliness is next to godliness i know it's not in the bible but stay with me folks <laughs> it's symbolically in there okay so you see how there's order and there's balance in your life and it's reciprocity because as you are taking care of yourself you probably what have children and you've probably got family and friends you're taking care of them too so you're expressing your love via your actions by how you're taking care of yourself. So basically, you know when you're loving yourself, when you're also the other key factor, you're living the career and life of your dreams, your purpose, your dharma, what you were divinely brought here to do in this world. So are you in the career of your dreams? You know, for a lot of people, it is acting. Okay, it is singing, it is dancing, it's entertaining the world to make them feel good, to for them to be empowered and accomplish the dream that they want to when they come see you in concert or whatever the case may be. And they hear you love your voice that makes them feel so good inside and that you're singing love songs and things of that nature. As an example, are you a plumber who goes in there and fixes that sink and, and the toilet and things of nature that's jack, jacking up someone's bathroom and they can't take a shower, whatever the case may be? So are you ministering through your purpose and you can click the little, you know, faucet or whatever the case may be to help them have good running water? Are you the trash man or trash woman going around, you know, big, you know, picking up the stinky winky trash and taking away, you know, to help people live a more sanitary, you know, happy lifestyle, whatever, smell, you know. It's not about, you know, being stars and celebrities. Every job has its purpose. Every job has a specialty that they're helping people inadvertently and in turn for your service and for the help that you get, you're getting paid. So you know you're living a purposeful, loving life. If you have the job of your dreams, and if you, and your purpose, and you're fulfilling them with that purpose, that money's coming in, to establish you to have good credit, to be having food, clothing, and shelter, and transportation to get to your location, and the like. So this is the product of a person that's truly loving themselves. And after a wonderful day's work, they can come home and say to themselves, hmm, I made a contribution to live a better world for myself, my family, my friends, and my fellow man and woman kind. And I'm very happy about it. And when you see that you are organized, that you are balanced, that you are expressing that type of love to yourself, then you know that you are ready to find the love of your life that you're in right now. And also all the, the love of your life that you, that you have in a relationship right now, are they too mimicking those things? Are you waking up in the morning saying, I love you, and then showing that you love them by giving them a hug, by giving them a kiss, 
and then be the most important actions by getting their cup of coffee in the morning time, serving them, and in turn, by you being gracious enough, and they're loving themselves, they're going to inadvertently, they're feeling good, they want to make you feel good, they're going to one day wake up in the morning and serve you your cup of coffee, or maybe they will fill up the gas in your car to make sure that you have gas when you're on the way to work. Because as you take care of other people, serve and help them accomplish their dreams and live a happy, loving life, in turn, that energy will come back to you. Now, the main thing about it, and this is the trick, this is the true trick, that as you serve other people, you don't expect anything in return for that serving. Because love is not a barter. Love is not a business transaction. Meaning, I will do this for you, and you will do this for me. Okay? Because when you're in that vibe, people are naturally conscientious. Like, you're being conscientious about the love that you're giving yourself. You, in essence, are going to draw the people that are going to be conscientious about the love that they are giving and receiving themselves. I've got to talk louder so you can hear me. So that's what you want to do, ladies and gentlemen. Start dissecting that. Are you loving yourself? And more importantly, the other thing is treat yourself the way that you want that future mate to treat you. Meaning, take yourself out to dinner. You know, identify, you know, um, the loving expressions, travel. You know, go to the places that don't wait for someone else to take you to travel to those wonderful places. Start traveling and go to those wonderful places because when you're traveling and at Loving Format, maybe you might meet your stomach on that wonderful travel as you are loving yourself. So start dating you. So start treating you the way you want to be treated, okay? Because as you go through the motions of, um, living the life and being the person that you want to be and being the person that you want to meet. You have to first, you know, understand what that is all about. You know, incarnate. And if you're not, let's say, let's be honest with yourself. Let's say you are crabby. Let's say you don't smile. You know, a smile is the best makeup that you can put on <laughs> every single day. It gets out good smiles, I mean, good good vibes inside of you. And then in turn, if you notice that smiling and happiness is contagious, just like an attitude is also contagious. If you're showing up in that, you're in pissosity and that, you know, you're putting out the energy. Do you notice you draw to other people that they start getting attitude and anger and all of a sudden you're in an argument with someone? And that voila, uh, let's just say that love is not in the room or love is not in the house. So that's the question that you're going to ask yourself with all those examples that I've just now given you. Am I really in love with myself? Are you loving yourself if you don't have good credit? Are you loving yourself if you're overweight and you're not healthy and you have disease? Disease, any type of disease is a form of what? Disease. It's a form of being out of balance. And also, usually any type of disease has a negative emotion attached to it because all disease is mental. So if you have diabetes, if you have high blood pressure, if you are obese or overweight, okay, it is because of some type of emotional issue that you have, that you have. That's going on. We've never been taught that. Mm. So now you're being taught that now. So, for instance, diabetics, guess what? There's not enough sugar going on in their life. There's not enough sweetness going on to their life and happiness. Hmm. Something to think about. Someone who has heart issues, not giving enough love out, emotionally detached. So now we got to learn to be more loving and more giving. Okay? You have cancer. Cancer is stone as anger. People are very angry. So what do we do? We attack ourselves. Self-fulfilled prophecy. Angry people. So we got to start giving that a whole lot of love. So if you have any type of health challenges, you're not, you, you can't be in two places at the one time. You can't say you're at loving places and be sick. Okay. Ill thoughts, ill emotions, ill health. Okay. So we got to get that together. Um, are you, um, like I said, 
Do you really love yourself? Do you look in the mirror? Are you very critical of yourself? Do you criticize and judge yourself? Oh, you're fat, overweight, oh, you're unorganized, oh, you got the boss from hell because you're living in a career or a purpose that's not you. That's not what you really want to do. You just got the job just to pay the bills. So think about it. Maybe you're not attracting the type of love that you want because you're not the type of love that you want. Mm. Okay? So that's why now, let's get excited. So now we figured out one clue why we haven't found our soulmate. Because first, we're not experiencing the soul, godly, diva, divine nature with inside of ourselves. We got to be about it. You got to be in it in order to win it. So you got to be in love with yourself in order to draw the love that you want. Okay? So that's what we need to do. So what we're going to do today, we're going to write down all the examples of what love is all about. And then we're going to write down honestly where we're at right now. And like I said, if we got bad credit, if we're in debt, if we're disorganized, if we don't have a, we, we're out of sorts with our family, friends, and loved ones, we're disengaged with, uh, you know, loving them only because we're not loving ourselves. Hello, introduce yourself to you. And now start focusing on learning how to love yourself. Be more generous, compassion, accepting yourself, your good points and your bad points because it's all good because it's all God and who and what you are and start working on improving on those things and start getting into the spiritual essence and the divine God goddess within inside of you first lesson how to find your soulmate is to first be your soulmate be the love that you're looking for thanks so much for being here today Get excited, let's get to work and start focusing on peeling away at the aspects of ourselves that we want to change and start developing the divine diva and the divine essence of man that we are working towards today. See you tomorrow for secret number two and how to find your soulmate in 2019. Bye-bye for now. Namaste. Peace. Hit the boom.